Hello my fellow family foodie friends and welcome back to another What's for Dinner where I share with you four dinners we had this week. Starting with one of my absolute favorite dinners, beef and noodles in the Instant Pot. So for the beef and noodles, we have the home style noodles and the beef broth. This will come in handy later. But right now we're going to put our beef in our French onion soup and the beef consomme. I have a whole video on this, but this is over two pounds of meat. I don't like to have a ton of beef in here, so I'm gonna cut this and have half of it now and half for a future beef and noodle recipe. Um, this is almost $12 for this, so getting two dinners out will make it much more budget friendly, plus we don't need to have a ton of meat. This is an entire dinner that my daughter won't eat. Um, we don't do those very often, but we will have her have leftovers of some sort. Wow, they're in a circle. Yeah, like... Hey, Cal, I need to get your boots and your coat on because we have to go to Elsie's party. So I'm putting the beef and the beef consomme and the French onion soup right in here. We're going to lock the plate in place. It's on seal. And we're going to pressure cook for 90 minutes. And now we're going to pressure cook for 90 minutes. And now I can go to my daughter's Christmas party while this is cooking. Yay! See you later. Okay, so the pressure is released. This actually, the 90 minutes of pressurized cooking ended 2 hours and 12 minutes ago. So it's been sitting for a long time. I was gone. And this is what we have now. Smells amazing. I am going to pull big chunks of fat off and shred the beef. At this point we are going to add in the noodles after the broth has started to boil. I put it on saute mode and I turn it to keep warm instead of any sort of cooking setting. I put the lid back on once the noodles are stirred in and I let it just sit there. We actually went and saw Santa while it was sitting there and when you come back it is nice and cooked and the noodles have a chance to soak up all that broth. Ours probably sat for like an hour and a half before we ate it by the time the green beans are cooked and we got back from Santa. The green beans are very straightforward. I use frozen green beans. I boiled them until they were soft and then I added in some butter and some garlic, salt and pepper. I didn't measure anything and I almost added some Parmesan but my oldest daughter didn't want it in there so I left it on the side. My oldest daughter ended up heating up a pack of Madras lentils. They're right from Costco in the microwave, and she could eat them with green beans. And if you're a monster like me, you can put the green beans right on top of your beef and noodles so you can pretend they're more noodles. So I, so on my most recent live, I had someone suggest to me a pack of onion soup mix, apricot preserves, chicken breast. She didn't say frozen, but I'm doing it today because that's what I need to work with. And then she said Russian dressing. I couldn't find Russian dressing. Also, I saw that there's sometimes as mayonnaise in Russian dressing and my husband will not eat anything of mayonnaise. So you know what? I'm just going to go for it with French style dressing. I don't know if this will be a disaster, but I'll let you know. We're going to get into it. But I need a really quick dinner because my daughter has a 4.30 dentist appointment not close to our house. So I need something that can be cooking while I'm gone. Get 
Get it all over. Yeah, move it all over. Good job. Thanks, bud. Okay. And now we're using one pack of the onion soup mix. Kyle, can you put that down, please? Okay, look, we're going to sprinkle this everywhere. Good job. I have shared this rice a million times, but if you are new around here, I love to make rice in my Instant Pot. You do equal parts water to equal parts rice. You seal your Instant Pot and you hit the rice button. It really cannot be easier. And by the time it's done, you just take a fork and fluff it. And you don't even have to be around when it's done. It can sit on warm for a long time and then you fork fluff it when you're ready. And I am removing my chicken and dicing it up. That way it was really easy to integrate the sauce, the chicken, right on top of the rice. And while I thought this dinner was absolutely delicious, my husband thought it was too sweet. He is not a sweet and sour chicken fan. And this definitely was reminiscent of it. It also reminded me of a Hawaiian chicken that I used to eat when I was a kid. And my husband, again, doesn't like Hawaiian chicken, so... It was a no for him. Me and my middle daughter love this dinner. I steamed a couple broccoli crowns to go on the side and we also had a bunch of fresh oranges and it made for a real simple dinner. Here are all of the ingredients for a dump crock pot dinner. So I got this spread from Aldi today, a dollar off. I forgot to make some last night and then I was hoping it would be on sale if I went first thing in the morning. So I stocked up some more for my freezer. That is something I love to do. And this is like a perfect addition and a quick clutch meal. Frozen broccoli and cauliflower, frozen corn, frozen peas and carrots. I bought one broth, beef broth, for two different dinners because in my mind I already got it. So um, I am using beef bouillon tomatoes I'm putting the whole can in and two cans of tomato juice and then I'll add seasonings and eventually I'll add taco meat so I will type out everything for this recipe and all of the recipes whether they're from Pinterest or something that I've made up like this soup will be listed below so don't forget about that but I made this dinner because on this particular night my husband was getting four fillings and I knew that chances are he probably wouldn't eat dinner with us but if he did, he would want something super soft. So I did this, and he is not a big fan of the taco meat in vegetable soup. To him, it's too weird of a combination, but my middle daughter and I really like it. It makes it kind of spicy, a little meaty, and we really liked it. So I was right. He did not eat dinner with us, so I was glad that I went ahead and added the taco meat because normally I wouldn't add it for his sake. And I added that later in the meal, but right now I am adding my minced onion, my Italian seasoning, salt, pepper, and red pepper flakes on top of all of the other ingredients that I mentioned to you. Again, I will list those all below and I am setting this in the crock pot for eight and a half hours. I use my instant pot with an instant pot lid as my slow cooker. Sometimes I use my slow cooker but the lid on it is wonky and it really is not fun so I use my instant pot unless I feel like it's not going to work for some reason, but for the most part, my Instant Pot is interchangeable with my Crock Pot for right now. 
I did ask Santa for a new crock pot though, so we'll see. And you can see at four hours in, I am ladling half, well not half, I'm filling up the little crock pot with vegetable only soup before I go ahead and add in a hunk of my pre-made taco meat. You guys know I use this for all my taco dinners. I make this in large batches ahead of time and keep them in the freezer in my garage. And it makes for real simple additions, even if you're just plopping it right in a soup for the next four hours. I just literally dropped it in there and let it melt and eventually dinner is ready. So I'm cutting bread. This is a take and bake bread loaf from Aldi. Really simple dinner, very yummy, and everyone in my family loves vegetable soup. Some of us prefer no tackle meat though. So here are the all-star ingredients. Apparently this is a great value day. So all of this is from Walmart. Chili sauce, homestyle meatballs, 32 ounce bag, a can of sauerkraut, you're supposed to rinse it and drain it. I'm actually not gonna do that. A can of whole berry cranberry sauce and you put it all in the crock pot. So I'm using my instant pot. I have my inner pot here. I love that I can take it out, work on my island and then take it to the instant pot. So now we're gonna get started. I also forgot to mention you need a three quarters cup of brown sugar, but we're gonna get started. We're gonna get everything added right into the inner pot. So if you're thinking meatballs and potato skins sound like a really odd dinner, you are correct. This is not actually a dinner. We are hosting a family Christmas at our house and we all decided to just take it easy and have snacks and appetizers. So these are my two contributions and as it goes, you eat enough at a Christmas party that no one actually is hungry for a dinner later in the day. So we just grazed on meats, cheeses, meatballs, potato skins, whatever we had out all day long and by the time dinner rolled around no one was hungry so mission accomplished but my contributions I did have some other small things but my main contribution were, were these meatballs that I absolutely love So these potato skins my daughter and I made, we ended up using 11 entire potatoes. I cleaned them and then she oiled them for me. I baked them in the oven at 400 degrees for 55 minutes. I did salt and pepper them. I let them cool for half an hour before I got to this process. So the cleaning and oiling was an hour and a half before this process where you cut them in half and you gut them. And you do want to leave some potato meat in the potato skin because otherwise you're basically eating skin and that's really gross. But you need something that's going to be fluffy and once you gut it, you're going to take butter and you're going to coat the back of them so they're face down and they go in the oven for 8 more minutes at 400 degrees. Once they bake for 8 minutes at 400 degrees, you're going to flip them, butter them again and bake them face up for five more minutes and then you can stuff them. So you'll see me doing that, but right here I am just placing all of the potato innards. I did mix a little milk, a little garlic, salt, onion powder, salt and pepper right into there and I'm gonna bake these um, as I'm heating up the potato skins. This is just to not waste the insides. You don't have to do this, but it makes a really yummy extra and um, bonus, they were really good with my meatballs. So here the, my potatoes are coming out for me to butter face up. These again go in the oven for five more minutes and once they come out they are ready for the toppings. The toppings we chose were shredded cheddar, minced green onion, and diced bacon bits. I did make my bacon bits. I had baked the bacon earlier in the day. I baked it right in the oven. We actually had it for breakfast and then I kept about five or six pieces out and just chopped them. Super simple, but you could also go for a bagged bacon bit. It doesn't really matter, but I love homemade bacon bits. So here you can see me decorating them. Some were just cheese, some were cheese, bacon, onion. That's what most of them were and some were just cheese and onion. I have one daughter that doesn't eat meat, so you've heard me say that a million times. So the potato skins finally went in the oven for three more minutes until the cheese was melted. Mine only took about three more minutes still at the um, 400 degrees, but you could go as long as you want. And now you are seeing my spread. I really hope you enjoyed this dinner. What's for dinner? 
There I actually served my leftover vegetable soup. We had lots of snacks to go for and if you enjoyed this video, make sure you check out my other Vlogmas videos. I totally appreciate you watching. I'll see you next week. Ciao down and ciao. Oh, and Merry Christmas.